Welcome to Character in Action with Matthew J. Norcross, the official podcast of the Seven Degrees of Change Foundation. Come journey with us on the real life stories of character in action. And now here's your host, Matthew J. Norcross. Welcome to Character in Action from the Seven Degrees of Change Foundation. I'm Matthew J. Norcross here in the studio with Robbie Dillmore. Hey, Robbie. It's good to be here again. Yep. <laughs> so this week, we're going to do something a little bit different. Robbie and I are going to talk about two character traits. One is caring, and the other is citizenship. And um, the first clip I'm going to play with for you today is from Sam Carr, and he talks about both of these traits in one clip. Let's take a listen. While I'm also a citizen of High Point, I would want the same thing as I currently do from our current city council. Um, and, you know, I, I would want um, the same amount of care to be given to me by someone as what I would plan to give and hope to give to a citizen that may come to me with a request or an issue that they may face. Um, and that's taking care of even the ones who might be less fortunate um, and who might be homeless, um, who might be uh, dealing with food insecurity, um, and ensuring that they um, have the the need the the food and um, you know housing that they might need to survive on a cold winter's night or a warm summer day, and um, caring for those that um, are less fortunate and um, need a little bit of an extra hand, and ensuring that they have the the proper um, uh, avenues to to achieve what they need to achieve. So, Ro- so Robbie, that is an incredibly powerful quote. What do you think of it? Well, yeah, it comes down to, you know, kind of what Jesus said. <laughs> Love your neighbor as yourself. Right. And, and, and actually, you think even more of your neighbor than yourself, which is a, a, tar- a tall order, but, you know, one of those things that, that, that really – you think about when somebody's done that for you in your life, you know, I, I went through cancer and, and I can't think of all the people that reached out to me and did so much for my family during that time. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you experience caring like that, then you actually have a chance to care for others the way you were cared for. Exactly. So I, I originally asked him about caring and he talked about, talked about caring for his citizens. And I thought, I thought that was a good combination from that quote. And, um, there are ac- actually, there are two other, two other quotes about citizenship I'd like to talk about today, and um, one of them is from Mark Robinson, which who whom you may remember was on our show a couple weeks ago, and um, he had a very, very telling quote about citizenship I'd like to play for you all. Take a listen. To be a good citizen means to be involved in the process. That is how our founders designed it. Our founders designed it so we would be involved in the process. And the reason you should be involved in the process is that so as a citizen, you can be the head and not the tail. That is the way the founders designed it. Being involved in the process, that is incredibly powerful. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been involved in the process of citizenship. And um, yeah, I really like that quote from Mark. What are your thoughts, Robbie? Interestingly, yesterday I was praying mm-hmm. and, and studying the Bible like I often do. And as right. I was studying this particular passage, um, it, it was in Genesis 2, and I was trying to understand the mist that came up from the ground. And I was actually just struggling with prayer and, and trying to figure out what that meant. And Jesus kind of showed up to me, and he kind of asked me this question. Mm-hmm. He, it, it was maybe a statement, a profound statement I'll never forget. He said, Robbie— you really can't experience, excuse me, you really can't understand me until you experience me. Right. A- a- and the more I've thought about that since I heard it from him, <laughs> the more <laughs> profound that's become. And you really think about that when it comes to citizenship. In other words, how are you going to understand the process if you're not literally involved in the process? In other words, if you sat in on two or three sessions of Congress, or you sat in on two or three meetings or whatever, all of a sudden you're going to understand a whole lot better what's going on and maybe even who to vote for (laughs) and those (laughs) kind of things that, that, wow, you know, that, that actually, um, when you experience something, it it leads to great understanding. Even if, you know, if you ever tried to build one of those, you know, 
shelves or something, you know, that had, comes with the directions. Well, until you start to put them together and you've put that piece in upside down, you don't understand. Yeah. Same thing about citizenship. Exactly. So there, there's actually, speaking of, there's another great quote about citizenship that I'd like to play for you all. So, Robbie, I interviewed Cyril Spiro last week. He is the founder of a, co- of a software company called Easy Suite, and he has a great quote about citizenship that I'd like for you to hear today. Take a listen. Sweet. The role of businesses to be good citizens is to produce. And because of the way our capitalistic engine is created, if people are producing things that aren't needed, those businesses won't do well. And if people are producing things that are very much in demand, those businesses will do great. And as a result, the equilibrium will always be there to produce what's necessary for the country. Very interesting of him to talk about citizenship from the perspective of a businessman. I mean, he's the founder of a um, tech company, very small tech company, if you will, that supplies for um, charter schools. And um, yeah, again, that quote was very interesting. What are your thoughts, Robbie? Yeah, I, you know, I, I I used to coin this term that I heard years ago that um, production, or excuse me, morale is is based on production. In other words, people that aren't producing anything, right? Morale goes down and down and down and down and down. And same thing with citizenship. If you're not doing anything with your citizenship, then mm-hmm. your morale or you know your sense of you know is is the country going up or down? If you're not involved in it, you know there's no production. Um, no, pr- nothing that you're producing as far as being a citizen, then, you know, by all means, it gets back again to, you know, what Mark Robinson said to me, exactly. which, which is in order to, to, to truly understand the process or to again, feel good about what's going on. It, it, you need to be involved. Right. Right. And, um, yeah, so there is another, there is one more quote that I would like to play for everyone today. It's from David Capen, and it's about caring. And um, I thought it was a great quote from from David. And I want everyone to listen right now. Caring is a very lost art in a a lot of areas of life, but especially Mm -hmm. in politics, I think caring can be thrown out the window. Um, You know, politics can be very dehumanizing. I say dehumanizing in the sense of, you know, forgetting that uh, people are people. Right. I mean, everybody's passionate on all sides of issues. Um, and sometimes we forget that there's real human beings involved. So um, what were your th- what were your thoughts when you heard what David said, Robbie? I actually think that's a, a bit cynical mm-hmm. um, that, you know, politics to some extent is based on caring. Right. right? These people, um, they they're serving their country and, and because they care sometimes uh, about a certain issue, it it drew them into politics to begin with, and you know right. they get up in the morning, you know, like anybody else, trying to figure out how to, um, you know, make the world a better place or whatever it is that, that they're, you know, obviously they're going to feed their family and all those things like we all do. Exactly. But, you know, I think good politics, and and I certainly, um, like to think that many of our our public servants are actually just that public servants, and so that right. that doesn't mean that. One bad apple doesn't destroy a whole bunch, but none, mm-hmm. nonetheless, I think there's a lot of them out there that that are based on that, and they desperately need our prayers because they're certainly in a place of great attack, right? Right. A- and and if they're standing up for good values and the things that you know we talk about in character and action every week, exactly, then they desperately need our prayers. But chances are there are a lot of Mark Robinsons out there, you know, and we. If you weren't encouraged when you listened to that interview, go back and listen again. <laughs> oh yeah. If um, by the way, a, a quick note to our listeners: if you missed any of these episodes, please take a listen to all of them. They are fantastic interviews, and I really enjoyed talking with them. Yeah, and it really gives me an idea. Again, you're talking to somebody that, in each of these cases, that live and eats and breathes uh, politics. And I understand that that politics is based on a lot of things that mm-hmm. makes a, a lot of us uncomfortable. Yeah, but but nonetheless, I, I really feel that that it is based on caring. And sometimes people care about things that God doesn't care about, and that's all the more reason that we need prayer because. 
you know, his idea is that we would walk hand in hand with him. And the idea of government, obviously, is to protect the people. And certainly the the orphans and the widows and those kind of things have always been huge on God's mind. And, mm-hmm. you know, in this country, you know, it's government that, that does a great deal of the caring for that. I wish it was all the church. Yeah. Um, but, again, the, the people that are involved in that are doing a whole lot. And, 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 you know, they need our prayers. They need our support. And, again, they need our involvement. Yeah. And, I mean, when— as and as the 2024 elections kick in, it, it's more important to think about that more than ever, don't you think, Robbie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, every single election is another opportunity that, that God has given us to take part in understanding the process, to take part in being um, a, a good voice for Him in the process, yes. to, to share light where, where light is. Not, you know, it's awful dark in places, right? Yeah. And the darker it gets, the the brighter the light shines. And that's part of the reason, I, you know, I feel like people like Mark Robinson and your other guests that you had, their lights are shining bright out there. And whatever we can do, you know, to help reflect Christ in this in this arena is, is, a, is a real opportunity that we have for such a time as this. We were mm-hmm. born at this time. Right. Right? Because God trusted us with what, <laughs> you know? Yes. And, and you know, certainly if— you're like me, and I'm in my 60s, you know, you, or you're in your 40s or 50s. You, you, you grew up in a place that was pretty safe, mm-hmm. and, and, and I bet you got a chance to eat most of your meals. And In other words, we've, we've had a, an amazing life to those people that grew up in Nazi Germany or, or mm-hmm. the people that lived under, um, you know, in Cambodia during what happened in the last, you know, 30 years ago. But, so, you know, we've had an amazing time of peace and all that because our forefathers took part in this thing, shared the light, cared, and were great citizens. Yes, this was this was short, but we've had a lot of fun reviewing these quotes. Oh yeah, and and something to think about and pray about as we all have an opportunity to go into this season again. It's coming up on November again to just kind of whet our appetites for for what twenty twenty four is going to be, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, Robbie, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for being on this journey with me today. My pleasure. Character in Action is a co-production of Firebird Media and the 7 Degrees of Change Foundation. Your host is me, Matthew J. Norcross. Our producer is Robbie Dilmore, who also does the intro. Special thanks to the Truth Network. If you like the show, please listen to and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes are posted every Sunday. Thank you for listening. And always remember, everyone can be a phoenix.